Good Thursday, yeah, on yet another edition of the program. This is uh, Views on the uh, Continent. We continue to analyze issues affecting the African continent, and today our focus is on Cameroon. And of course, we want to revisit uh, the uh, speech made by uh, uh, the President of the Republic, uh, His Excellency uh, Paul Beer. And of course, here today, our focus is on uh, the role or uh, the stakes of uh, youth engagement in. Uh, entrepreneurship and uh, nation building like has always been uh, uh, the case many uh, decades ago were Cameroonian youth on the 11th of February 2023 commemorated the 57th edition uh, of the National UD this year celebration was held under the theme youth moral civic and entrepreneurship rearmament a guarantee for discipline in building a united and prosperous Cameroon. The UD commemoration in Cameroon has always been an occasion to underline uh, the, the uh, youth's ability and commitment uh, to uh, contribute to the creation of a prosperous and uh, stable uh, nation, of course, a stable uh, future as well. Uh, while addressing these youth uh, or young people on the eve of the UD, President Paul Beer challenged them to valorize education and prepare themselves for future challenges. He equally urged the young people to work towards self-employment and to use the digital uh, space positively to solve some of the young, uh, youth problems. However, President Beer's speech did not appeal to all the young people as majority of them have remained frustrated due to the many problems that they face in the contemporary uh, society, citing uh, youth unemployment, which is actually a call for concern. Notwithstanding, today on the program, Views on the Continent, uh, we focus on on the pleas of young people or the efforts mended by the young people in uh, Cameroon uh, to change their narratives or the narratives surrounding them and of course uh, their engagement in uh, entrepreneurship and of course what they contribute to nation building. You are most welcome ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, the program informative and of course interactive meaning you can be part of the program by just dialing the numbers which we will give to you in the course of the program to contribute and of course share on quarter what you think about uh, today's uh, discussion uh, uh, youth engagement that strive uh, towards entrepreneurship and of course their contribution to nation building and uh, coming uh, days after uh, the 57th edition of the National Youth Day in Cameroon. Time for us to uncover the panel. And uh, with delight, I'll be presenting to you uh, Professor uh, Akumbo Mac Anthony. He's an entrepreneur, uh, Pan Africanist, and also a political analyst joining us this day to throw more light on this topic, which is of, of utmost importance. Uh, uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor Akumbo, for joining us today uh, on the program. Thank you very much, Clarice. It's actually a privilege being here. It has been a while, and I say Happy New Year to all those who uh, are participants and watching this particular channel. It is a pleasure. I also want to say Happy New Year to my fellow panelists and welcome to this particular program. I think uh, the topic of discussion today is so, so important. And as we get to discuss on it, we are going to be discussing some issues that actually are troubling our people in Africa Indeed. as a whole. And I think uh, discussing on it is going to give a part. Uh, we are going to chat, chat a part, or let me say, uh, remind most of us of the part which will actually bring us to where we are going to. Indeed, indeed, yeah. it is imperative, of course, uh, to know how ready the young people are uh, to actually bring forth uh, nation building or uh, to contribute uh, to entrepreneurship. Uh, what is the role of the young people? I'm also glad to, to introduce to you Mr. Ndiwum Emmanuel, a civil society activist who doubles as a political analyst. Uh, hello to you, sir, and thanks for joining me this day. Hello, sir. Hello viewers, hello Professor Mark Anthony, and hello to all the, the people watching Africa at this point in time. It's always a privilege 
to talk about issues that can in one way or the other shape the landscape of Cameroon. So we are delighted to be here. Thank you for the invitation. And thank you too for accepting this invitation, oh, Mr. Ndium. It is utmost to talk about the place of the young people, given that Cameroon is a nation that is made up of very uh, vibrant and uh, young people. So today we want to look at how far uh, these young people are ready uh, to uh, take the available opportunities uh, to actually contribute their quota uh, in nation building and of course uh, promote uh, uh, entrepreneurship drive and of course looking at the available resources, the challenges of young people still across uh, uh, Cameroon. Thank you once more. If you're just tuning in, it is views on the uh, continent. And of course, we're going to dive straight away, uh, Professor Mark Anthony, uh, with an analysis. It is imperative. We know today we're talking about uh, the involvement of youth or engagement of young people in entrepreneurship and nation building, taking the case study of Cameroon. And this is coming from, you know, young people, uh, uh, some days ago, uh, commemorated uh, a youth day in Cameroon. So today we want to look at the place of the youth. In your own perspective, what is the place of the young people in Cameroon this day? Thank you very much, Clarice. Uh, it is very imp important to remind uh, our viewers that Africa is a very youthful continent. Indeed. What I want you to understand about Africa is that Africa has always strived on the shoulders of youth, not on the shoulders of uh, uh, what our ancestors and grandparents that sit you now in power today. Most of them that you see in power today in Africa actually came into whether it's politics when they were young, whether it's entrepreneurship, or whether it's uh, business when they were young. Uh, if you go back the 1960s to find out those who actually fought for the independence, let's talk of the 1940s and 1950s, those who fought towards the uh, political independence of Africa from colonialism, uh, I'll remind you that most of those fighting were young people. They were students. And uh, what they did was actually invest their time to forge a future for themselves. But it's unfortunate that in our generation, most of those who came to power as youths just believe that the youths are not prepared enough to come in, whether be it in the business field or be in the political field. It's, it's unfortunate. And it's really funny how they see things from that light. I don't know how they got that, to that position. That should be greed of power. That should be, uh, should I say, hunger for for power which has led them to a place where they have, they have become blind to what is necessary towards the development of our continent in Africa. When we talk about entrepreneurship per se, because we are talking about what are the stakes of youth engagement in yeah. entrepreneurship and nation building. Well, to, before we talk about nation building, let's look at entrepreneurship. <clears throat> entrepreneurship, the word itself, talks of is a kind of French word entrepreneur that's to get involved uh, in uh, let me use the word to get involved in something to entrepreneur so the word entrepreneurship means getting engaged I should say in solution provision why because when I say solution provision is because a true entrepreneur is not just a businessman. There are a lot of persons out there in our communities and societies who claim to be entrepreneurs, but they are not entrepreneurs. Uh, they might be Bayam Salams, they might be uh, committed business persons who are doing commercialization to get more profit for uh, what they are engaging. But a true entrepreneur is somebody who provides solutions to the problems of a community or society. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Such an individual does not actually get engaged just because he wants to make himself rich or very, very rich. But by being a solution provider, he ends up becoming rich. When you provide a solution to a problem facing the people, automatically the people get engaged in buying what you are providing. And so such a person is an entrepreneur. And an entrepreneur from a basic point 
is an individual who has a good idea on how to solve a particular problem facing the people then he initiates the idea walks towards its uh, uh, execution and bam he gets to solve the problem people then get engaged in acquiring the solution yeah. that in itself permits such an individual to get wealthy so why i decided to take that layman's uh, explanation is because i think most of us need to understand who an entrepreneur is Absolutely, an, yeah. an entrepreneur you as a youth you can become a solution provider wherever you are uh, i want to say that if you want to check very well today most of the richest persons on earth today got engaged and their youth for example I don't know, we might use a wrong example, for example, using somebody like a Mark Zuckerberg, who is not an African community, to explain how you can use an idea to become. But what about our young people in Africa who have beautiful ideas, they are willing to entrepreneur, to engage themselves, bring solutions to problems, but they never have people who are willing, for example, to push them ahead. Most good ideas have been buried with most of the young people. Most good ideas are placed in different uh, uh, ministries on papers that have been uh, uh, actually dumped there. Some good ideas are in the minds of some young individuals now suffering in the quarters and in the streets. I've seen a lot of young people come up with wonderful ideas, but what happened? Uh, they just the government came up and told them we are going to send you for further studies the question is when they came up with that thing did they need, was it for that study that gave it to them no so we have a society which actually helps in killing solution providers in killing in young individuals with solutions and so we need to start looking at how to encourage the government of our different nations to get to it to push these young people to become uh, solution providers to 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 to, to learn here okay. you remember the president of the republic of cameroon at a particular end of year speech encouraged young Cameroonians to get involved in agriculture but it was yeah. unfortunate that he told them to get engaged in agriculture and most of them are willing but he never told them how to get land because you don't become an uh, 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 an agriculturalist without a, a land you must put down those ideas on the land so it is unfortunate so i expect that the cameroon government one way or the other should look for a means on how to give lands to these young people who are willing to get involved in agriculture that is another way towards nation building so we are going to talk on that detail absolutely uh, professor mark Anthony. we are going to uh, enter in total in, in into that uh, 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 let me come to you, uh, Mr. Andrew. Uh, today we are looking at the stakes. In your own perspective, what do you think are those stakes uh, of uh, entrepreneurship or youth engagement in entrepreneurship in, in a contemporary uh, Cameroon? Before, of course, uh, going to see some of, of the, the, the lapses, but then how can you rate the, 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 the willingness of young people in Cameroon? <coughs> Uh, towards engaging uh, in uh, this uh, entrepreneurship and of course uh, wanting to be part of a nation building uh, I want to think that uh, if there was a time we needed to appreciate the Camerina youth we are sitting on that time at this particular time you see this our Camerina youth are some of the youth that really needs to be appreciated because Youths who have been abandoned to themselves for a very long time and they still strive gives you an idea that these youths can they are sustainable. First of all, for themselves, they can endure despite all the hurdles that, have been, that they have been put to, to go through. When you look at how the, the youths in Cameroon in particular, the hustles and the buzzles that these youths have embraced, it gives you an idea that these are used that if somebody could give them a pat on the back, African best youth entrepreneurs could have come from Cameroon. But it's regrettable, that's, it's regrettable that those who are supposed to give them this push up have been giving them a push down so that they remain on the same spot. 
uh, what explains the fact that when they talk about entrepreneurship, we should not only be quick to conclude that we are talking about money here. We have social entrepreneurs. We have political entrepreneurs. We have socio-political entrepreneurs. These are people who shape the thinking tanks of the society, who shape the society with ideologies. They all have the ideas. Yet, in the 21st century, where you are dealing with Android youths, we have analog leaders sitting on the destiny of these youths. And then at this point, it makes it practically very difficult for these youths to be able to germinate. Eh? Because these youths are like a seed. That seed has air, it has water, it has sunlight. But then they are placed zinc where the youths, where this seed was supposed to germinate. And that zinc are our leaders, whom unfortunately have decided that we will know no peace in the direction of success. So when you look at this put together and to queue with the president, it was but very normal that the president came out to fulfill a prophecy, I mean, or a rendezvous as usual. But the question is, how many youths even listen to him again? You know, when you are used to promising and failing, those you have been used to promising and failing them, they will also learn to boycott you when you are talking. Just take, for example, the president was talking about agriculture. That is a domain that can produce 60% of youth entrepreneurs in this country, without any doubt. But what has the president himself been doing in this domain to give a push to the youth? You know, we are talking in a country where, at a time when agriculture was supposed to be highly mechanized, we still used very crude tools to carry out agricultural activities. We are talking in a country where we were taught that when you want to do agriculture, you plant seeds. But we are talking in a country where tractors are actually planted to germinate in another part of that country. Go down to Ebolova. When last there was an agri uh, agro pastoral show uh, machine, tractors were planted there till date. We have been investigating and investigating, and those who have been trying to cover the lies have also been unable to carry those tractors out of the bushes where they were planted. Just imagine a situation where there was a scheme where these youths were offered these tractors to engage effectively in mechanized agriculture. It will go a long way, not only to help them to be entrepreneurs, but it will, it will also go a long way to help the government in the domain of food insufficiency, where at this time we are actually facing all over the world. Okay. And when you look at it, we are dealing with a regime that is used to promising. And Mr. Bia is one of the people who is a celebrity when it comes to slogans and speeches. That's somebody who has spent around 41 years, 41 years feeding and living on speeches and slogans. He could be celebrated in that domain. And then you, you, you will understand that with all this put together, the youth of Cameroon are always ready. Yesterday, today, and even tomorrow. But those who have not been ready, who have never been ready to give them that green light, is a government in place. Are, are you, uh, in other words, saying uh, that there is a lack of a political will in Cameroon? Thank you very much. Encourage the Thank you. Push through. Thank you very much for, for, for coming out with that word. Lack of political will to make the youth actually occupy the place that is theirs rightfully is what has killed the youth in Cameroon. Just take, for example, you know, and in this uh, sloganeering, they have succeeded to lure some lazy youth to join politics. You see them from one television to another singing with thank the head of state. And when you ask them, you, this young man, which position do you occupy in this party of the head of state? They don't have it. At the same time, there are even the poorest youth who go around singing these praises. So there is actually the lack of the political will to make sure that 
Cameroonians, Cameroonian youth are living up to expectation. And still in that domain of agriculture, we have agri schools in Cameroon. But then, in the Ministry of Agriculture, how many agri technicians do we have in that domain? The boss there himself is not an agri technician. And then it tells you that we are living in a country where youths have been forgotten. And any nation that, forgot or, uh, that forgets or abandons its youth is getting towards doom. That, ex that explains why the Cameroonian youth received the news that passport was 48 hours to be available with a lot of euphoria. Because most of them are looking for the slightest opportunity to run out. You are a woman. You are a girl, I should say. <laughs> of course, I'm a woman. Uh, you are a girl. Uh, have you ever asked yourself, how come that women have mustered the courage to the level where they are able to walk out of Cameroon, actually on foot, to look for greener pastures elsewhere, whereas they can make it in Cameroon. They have failed to make, to provide the, 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 the condition, the favorable condition that can keep youth back in the country. Uh, 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 I, I got your point uh, very well. I will come back to you, uh, Mr. Andrew. Uh, but let's let's continue with Professor Mark Anthony. Uh, we we heard everything that Professor Mark, uh, uh, Mr. Andrew, just highlighted, uh, and he, he said about the lack of the political will. But today, uh, before actually going to see the role of, of the leaders in uh, maybe seeing the young people realize some of these projects, let's first of all concentrate and see, yeah, because this is a I always say it, it's an era of great opportunities, and even the, the head of state uh, recently made mention we are talking about the the the, the, the digital era. It is a, a, an, an era that is more advanced. So, in your own perspective, uh, uh, it's often said that if it's not the government, it's the uh, private sector, and of course, who are those who make up the private sector? And it is very uh, very uh, uh, practical that it's the private sector even that sustain an economy. So now, in your own perspective, how can our young people use, because these are available opportunities, and we, we talked in the preamble, we ha highlighted education to be of utmost importance. Now, with the changing times, how can these young people obviously use the digital atmosphere or the digital eco uh, system professor mark anthony to bring a uh, uh, resolve to some of the the problems faced by young people uh, nowadays in cameroon and elsewhere in africa thank you very much Eric. now i was listening one time to uh, uh, an individual I might consider to be a mentor on finance, a financial mentor, he made mention of something. He said if he's going to encourage any young person in this generation to get involved in entrepreneurship, then he's going to encourage them to get into network marketing. Network. So I was like, okay, network marketing, what does that actually mean? Is it what I've been seeing today? Then he went further to explain that mm -hmm. it is something that can actually turn and transform the community if only people understand what networking is all about yeah. but that's where we have a problem uh, i want to come back before i get to that part to explain one of the things that we fail to understand in africa is we have been given a directive to follow which we do not actually fit in at the moment. You hear the talk of the f uh, uh, this, I say, the fourth revolution. Of course, fourth industrial, industrial revolution, revolution yeah. or whatever they call it. But this fourth revolution is practically not for a people like us. Why can we? I want to say that, that the African continent should not be deceived by pursuing the dreams of Europeans and Americans. We are not Americans, nor are we uh, Europeans. Africa has what can transform the economy to actually become what it can become in the future. What am I trying to say? 
if we look into the continent we realize that the majority of those active in the field are youth i mentioned that earlier and if we have to look at it we have a percentage of about 60 to 70 percent youth population we have a youth population of about 60 to 70 percent and that is problematic in itself very problematic if you realize that having a population of youth of 60 to 70 percent let's just say 60 percent then it means what will make a dif the difference is the youth secondly when we look at <laughs> the man is making me get yeah. when we look at uh, the situation on the ground i'm sorry about that you discover that africa is having a large Arabo on touch land which means africa has the resources that it needs to make young africans uh, wealthy and contributive entrepreneurial in different aspects so if we encourage the youth and we give them this Arabo land that is found in africa considering that most of our economies are called tech war economies or calling them developing economies we will realize that by engaging in developing this land through agriculture we will pick up we will catch up because the greatest problem of a community is not a problem of electricity the greatest problem of every community is food. Let's come back to that. Every community around us, whether it be it in Africa or wheresoever, has a problem of food. And if Africans do not realize that that is what can cause their continent and their various nations to evolve, to develop, to become giants, then we have a problem if i ask you how much tons of food are being imported into africa yearly you'll be shocked a whopping of 14 billion us dollar food is imported and the question is what are we why are we importing when we have the arab land why not encourage you to just get involved in agriculture not by telling them go and become agriculturalists, but by giving them land, by giving them the resources it takes to actually transform these farms into industrial farm areas and put the necessary machinery that transform this food into finished products ready for sales and for exportation. When that happens, you will realize then Africa will not only preserve the continent, but it will export food. I want to say this because there is a problem. We are being told that there is a food security problem in the world. When we have all the lands, why am I supposed to encourage a young man to get involved, to become digital when he has the closest means to get very wealthy, which is his farm? We are an agrarian, agrarian economy. And so we should focus on that and we can now come up with these digital aspects on how to sell the various resources that we uh, tap out of the soil when we get to know how to transform them and make them useful then we can now start selling them online we can get into all those uh, 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 you call them whatsoever that the, 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 the the fourth uh, <laughs> revolution industrial revolution that, that 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 can come but as long as we are talking right now africa does not need all that africa needs to survive if not we'll be deceived into jumping into things that will mislead us and they will end up saying that the white man has come and colonized us again we are the ones who have decided to be following their colonial path we can shape shape us and i think that's what africans should be doing right now
of, 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 thank you for that, uh, Professor Mark Antonia. Yeah? Coming to you, Mr. Andrew, we know that a lot of changes have occurred across uh, the global world, and we know with the aspect of globalization and international cooperation, it is uh, becoming very difficult for a nation to function or to stand as an entity. And today we, we are focusing on the young people today because we know that the African continent as a whole is made up of a young population and so today when we're looking at their engagement in entrepreneurship and of course nation building we also want to look uh, in a other in, in another perspective how the young or the potentials of young people across africa and in cameroon in particular uh, can be harnessed for them to to make themselves felt in this area of entrepreneurship and nation building and that is why i want uh, you to to elaborate more on how uh, uh, stakeholders can uh, ensure that they uh, properly harness the human capital because if uh, the young uh, youth the, the, they are confident enough and of course if their innate abilities are actually, uh, uh, actually developed then it will go a long way uh, to changing uh, the narrative surrounding uh, young people and of what why not the nation as a whole that uh, the first tip for the stakeholders who matter to take is just the will. If the will is there, the will will certainly come in. Let me say it and say it again. On the 10th of February 2016, the President of the Republic announced PTS. That is Plan Triennale Special for the Jeune. Let's say that was an option, but along the line, the will was not there to actually monitor it to maturity. I'm talking like somebody who has been to Northwest in many other areas to find out about this very PTS program. And I will shock you that the money that was factored into this domain was 100 and two billion franc CFE. I will equally shock you again to tell you that the few youths, let me take Boyo, where I come from, because yeah. I actually made a sample on this in Boyo. Okay. The authorities of Funon are watching, as they have been watching. They know what I'm talking about, and I've been telling them. When I made a sample in Funon, I discovered that not up to 4% of the youth in that area were involved in that program. The few clarities who were involved, to be honest with you, were those who were linked somehow either to the mayor of that locality, that's where I come from and I assume it, or they were linked to the, to, to the high profile elites of Boyo. That young man who was very intelligent and energetic in the field of agriculture do not benefit from it. What am I saying here? Corruption, embezzlement, is what has finished with the will of the stakeholders. When a president comes out with a program like that one, just imagine that it was holistically engaged. Do you know how many entrepreneurs that project would have created? And do you know the impact this young man would have created for the economy of Cameroon in general before the economy of their locality? Now, because embezzlement and corruption is the sole name of our government in place, we discover that we are dealing with a government that, creates, that has created more problems to the youth than solutions. Let's be factual here. Let me let, let be serious. We have a government that has been looking for every means to create problems for us, the youth, every day. Because when such a laudable initiative was announced, many youths, I can guarantee you, went jubilating. Especially the ones who have the skills. Because we, have, we don't lack the skills. Absolutely. Yeah. That is why when you see a young man who fails a concours in Cameroon, who goes into the U.S., 
and enrolls there. In every department, you discover that they are standing tall in their domain of work. That is the same student who can who could not pass and set an economy superior back here in Cameroon. That's the same student who could not, could not go to QS. But in a country which is a developed country, they are now models. What am I saying here? It boils down to the fact that stakeholders are not there to actually hold the hands of the youth. They are there for their families and some few lucky youths. I will tell you that we have uh, an African uh, association that we are that we are manning, New Era Youth for Africa, yeah. and we choose to work to come up with a project in the domain of the bike riding sector. That is to convert these young men to become entrepreneurial through the bike riding, and some of them were very happy. But the problems that they posed to us last week, yes. the first problem was that the council has not been assisting them in any way. One, the council sent agents to seize their bikes on daily basis because they have not paid a poll. And I disguised. I collected, I needed, I told them that I wanted to pay a poll for five of them. Yeah. And I went to Douala Five Council. Do you know that I arrived there and those cartoons where this impôt should be filled have not been delivered to the council till now, but these guys are being chased outside. That is just to tell you that the youths are always ready. But those who are killing them down are the stakeholders. Because the council forms part of the stakeholders you are asking, Clarice. Mm -hmm. And in this light, how can we then blame the youth? We tend to ask the state, and I ask them, is this the decentralization we have been crying for 26 years? That we are talking about decentralization. A cartoon, just to feel for impose. You, you don't have it. And in the month of February, but then people are being chased out. Do you know that this by rider has a woman to take care of, has kids, and then has school fees, has rent to pay? that one constitute the economic life of this individual. Absolutely, but yet, yeah. you who has the means and the ability, and we are supposed to work in partnership. I don't even want to say what happened with me with the Ministry of Youth Affairs. Because sometimes we actually want to believe that some of these people who are put there, they become scammers. And, and that's what, of course, I, I was wanting to, to add this. Uh, I want to look at the, the place of leadership uh, at every level, not only uh, uh, when, when we talk leadership. A leader is not just the president of the republic. Of and course, of, course, of course, uh, being in charge, you're already a leader. So I want to look at how poor leadership uh, is already uh, stifling uh, this uh, uh, youth uh, uh, emancipation and also uh, knowing how poor leadership has actually helped this young people because I was going to underline this aspect of cyber criminality. We talked earlier about the digital space and you see that young people, especially in Cameroon, are using the cyber space the, young, uh, the wrong way. Can we, uh, are we tempted to say that it is due to poor leadership that those people go to, to maybe... Uh, Madam Clarice, other, uh, uh, I will not even wait for your question to end. When you say are we tempted? That word enlightens the weight of what was about to be said in the right way, and you did not say it. Why is first of all cyber criminality? How have why have they been surviving in this domain? Whereas we have cyber security agents in Cameroon formed out of the country for this purpose, and they're in Cameroon. Just try today to hack the account at the presidency and see if you, are, you will not be picked up. I want to tell you that there are a lot of things in this country. Cameroon of late has proven to us that it takes just the will to do something. How did they get to arrest a lot of people on the Zogo case? We have one of the best security agents when it comes to investigation in Cameroon, but we have not been using them. Cyber criminality is something that can be tracked down in us. Just go to the Ministry of Defense in Yaoundé. 
if they have that order, they will do it. But do you know why they are not doing it? Uh, they know that they have youth that they have abandoned for so long. And they are pushing these youth to be distracted by sordid activities. So that the youth will not in turn put much pressure on them. Because it is such activity that has actually neutralized the reasoning of Cameroonian youth. They know that if I'm scamming and at night, some of them even have security uh, 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 agents. Very, I'm sorry to very, say so. Very problematic. Indeed. Which is very problematic. Very problematic and they know they, yeah. they loan money to them. You see a commissioner of police loaning money from a scammer. We, ca we cannot actually. No. Uh, 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 no, we. we uh, uh, no. Of course. Uh, we are on the field. Uh, abso absolutely. And we, some of these things, if we are caught up, we will bring proof. And I am saying that yeah. these are things that in the government that still has a plan for the youth and that still needs to install some level of morality into the youth. They can cope it without any waste of time. Abs but unfortunately, abs absolutely, yeah. in, a, in, a, in a government mm -hmm. where immorality is their basis on which they try for development, for governance, it becomes very problematic. Because those who are ruling in Cameroon cannot be taken for models in the field of morality, not uh, at all. Uh, 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 thank you for for for, for that uh, uh, opinion uh, expressed uh, regarding. Uh, if you are just joining us, uh, this is Views on the Continent on the Pan African Television. Today, we are looking at the place of the young people, particularly in Cameroon, in uh, engaging in entrepreneurship and, of course, uh, nation building. And uh, we are looking at some of the challenges of, of the young people. Is it the lack of the political will? What are stakeholders doing? at this particular moment uh, the problems have been identified what can be done professor uh, mark anthony uh, I, I will continue in the same light uh, with what uh, mr and just uh, underlined uh, which makes everything very problematic today how can we bring solutions that then we see we cannot talk about youth problem and then we dissociate politics so now we are looking at how bad politics, I, oh, I usually call it bad politics in court, how youth are being entangled. How, uh, please, uh, those are actually my words. Uh, so, and uh, looking at how youth are being entangled among politicians who are uh, vying for their political interests. How can we change the narratives? And of course, Ms. Tanzu mentioned some of the, the, the things that have occurred in the country have neutralized the reasoning of the young people and they are going about things the wrong way. So how can we solve this problem of, of not allowing youth being entangled or trapped between politicians and of course in turn uh, uh, make them to, to bring out uh, their potentials and, and strive in, in other areas which of course have a, a value and dignity. You know, we, we are talking of entrepreneurship and nation building. And Absolutely how to center the youth in this. You see, most of us at times we get to feel like uh, politics is meant for the old. And that's what we were told when we were younger. We used to be deceived that you have to get engaged and then when you are in your late 50s, get into 60s, then you can get involved. But they say the youth tomorrow belongs to you. So that deception kept a lot of us in a place of lack and poverty. And that is why we are where we are today, living a life where, a borrowed life, let me use that word. Because we were sold uh, a future that doesn't actually exist when we're supposed to be engaging at the present. And uh, we, we were made to believe that tomorrow is going to come and it's going to just be wonderful. As if tomorrow has already... In fact, there is a load of wealth that has been kept in the tomorrow for you. Mm -hmm. If you cannot get engaged right now, you will never have that tomorrow you are talking about. And that is the deception that this guy sold to most young people. And unfortunately, before we got to the point where we thought we were now getting to the tomorrow, mm -hmm. 
we realize that that tomorrow actually does not exist. And so that's where there's a problem. And I'm still talking now to those who are called youths today. <laughs> they might be seeing themselves as youths today, but they can engage their lives and make it happen better. I am not talking as if I'm old. I'm still a youth myself. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm yeah. simply saying that mm -hmm. I would have started earlier just for the fact that I was deceived that it's going, it's going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> so, uh, to answer that question, I want yeah. to say this. Corruption, which is something that is already in the root and core of every Cameroonian right now, which is something that is coming from the top to the bottom uh, is one of our greatest problems because if you talk of how you are asking me a question how can we stop the youth from actually getting entangled with politicians right now being entangled with politicians is already something that is happening and will keep happening because but we have of corrupt. course, if we are conscious of of the consequences, like knowing that, of course, the, 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 you said that that politicians <laughs> usually put themselves first. But then there is this consciousness, the reasoning that has, of, of course, young people are actually educated and vibrant, and they know all of this. How can they change the narratives? Except that you, you you're trying to say that emulating the young uh, the the the, uh, the are leaders and we want to continue, but there is I, I think there is uh, room for change. I didn't refuse that. Absolutely, I think that's where yeah. I was coming to okay, before uh, you see uh, this uh, stuff uh, from uh, my mouth. Okay. okay. The fact yeah. that most of us have already made that declaration that corruption is in the fabric of the Cameroonian from the top down to the bottom does not mean that there is no way out. There is a way out. Indeed. Yes. Always. Uh, if you can see, you want a young Cameroonian to feel like there is a possibility for him to step up and be different from what he is seeing where you see somebody who has been placed in a position to be a minister to walk towards the progress of that youth and he is capable of stealing billions of dollars of in fact hundreds of billions of dollars of france cfa to <laughs> hide in his house and then worse of it when He's being followed up. He decides to burn the money. It should make you understand that most of these individuals who are placed in leadership do not actually understand what money is. And that is why now I'll target the youth to tell the youth, money yes. is not those pieces of papers. And that's why those hooligans who steal it and think it is money. Those pieces of papers are just a means of exchange. Money is not those pieces of paper. And if you want to actually know real money, real money is what you possess that you need to give in order to take that piece of paper. So the money is that service or the good that you are giving out. And so it is very important for every young person to get involved in capacity building. When you build capacity, when you have the capacity to actually create a commodity mm -hmm. through which you can exchange to have that money, then things get di bit different. Most of these guys whom you see today sitting in, at the helm of power in our nations actually went out of this nation to school through scholarship that was given by the former government. And they were given scholarship to school out of the country they went there, what they could learn was corruption. <laughs> and when they came with all the book that they learned, they were unable to produce, an, in fact, just to, to transform, should I say Indian bamboo, into toothpick. They lack the know-how, and that is the reason why they will only know how to steal money when they see it already preserved. That's why they do everything possible to borrow more money, from IMF, borrow money, more money from the World Bank so that these thieves, these guys in the name of ministers can steal and keep in their houses. 
And we are the ones to pay through the taxes that are levied on us daily. So, if any young man is thinking of making the society different to empower the economy of Cameroon to get to uh, 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 engage in nation building, it is not by you looking at that office where they are. It's not for you <laughs> thinking that might be this the office that is going to give you money. No, it is not what they are doing that will make you rich. Okay. Because what they are doing is corruption. That's what you cannot tell me how it is possible that a policeman can build 10 story buildings when a true entrepreneur out there does not have one in Cameroon. I that is to make you understand that corruption is in the whole issue. Uh, it is possible for uh, an individual who has his money to bring in these big guys and pay them and they kill a young man a journalist so you get to understand how our community is so you have to understand that corruption is playing a very big role but if you have to not stay in that point if you don't want to be like them then there is need for you to get involved in capacity building it is time for you to not only learn a trade don't only get to school to get um, to empower your head but get to develop the capacity, the capacity that can indeed. transform something and make the, in fact, that can be exchanged for something. And so that is where we are. And if we do not value. do that, value addition. Value uh, value addition. Value 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 of course, education. Yes. I, I, I was coming to, to that, Professor <laughs> Mark Anthony. You, you highlighted so many things out there. And you see, that's why some people actually are uh, already advocating uh, that we should actually relook uh, into to the, the quality <coughs> of education uh, that, we, uh, that we have in, in, in contemporary Africa. I, quite, uh, I always love to quote uh, President Paul Kagame, who said that there are many opportunities out there for young people across Africa. But then, uh, uh, are we ready to take these opportunities uh, when they come? We have highlighted there are so many problems that actually stifling youth engagement in Africa, in Cameroon. So, uh, Mr. And before uh, coming to you, uh, just to remind our viewers that this is also an interactive program. So, uh, the numbers are on your screen. You can dial and, of course, share your own opinion of what you think about uh, uh, the uh, engagement of young people in entrepreneurial venture and uh, nation uh, building. Uh, how can we uh, use the resources available uh, to help contribute and uh, quarter while we continue to see how we can already solve the existing uh, problems of corruption, embezzlement, and you can name the rest. So uh, what what, what, what do you think are actually the, 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 the active or structural uh, changes that needs to be implemented in Cameroon to ensure, uh, to of, of course, uh, make uh, youth engagement in, in, in especially uh, in uh, the uh, economy, uh, the money economy, really felt to reduce the level of frustration Clarice, among young people? You will not escape the point that you first touched, which is on education. We have to understand that Africa has a very big problem when it comes to the level of education. Indeed, indeed. Our curriculum designers were brainwashed to think that when you could read and speak English very well, you were a super. So instead of designing a curriculum that was, that was skill-oriented or skill-based, mm -hmm. they developed is curriculum that was grammar based. So we are blowing the grammar, blowing it, wrapping our tongue. Whereas, out of that grammar, we actually had nothing skillful to offer. So I think we have been singing and we'll continue singing. It is time for the African economy in general, and Cameroon in particular, to rethink a curriculum that suits their immediate environment, environment the realities of the immediate environment. Just take, for example, those students that some years ago met a helicopter in Bamenda, some met tractors, some met caterpillars, that was an, uh, supposed to be an eye-opener for a government that means well for her youth. At that point in time, these are young men 
who were supposed to be picked up, sent to vocational and training centers, so that I the spillover effect that, that challenge, yes. can have an impact on those who are coming up. Because what you do with your hands and what you teach another person to do, that comes from you. Not that you were lectured from a doctor somewhere, a professor somewhere. It remains. That explains why in a country like Cameroon, you see doctors and professors carrying placards and sleeping on streets in Yaoundé, crying that they're not employed. Why? They went through an educational system that taught them only how to read and write. It never taught them how, you know, to be productive, to be creative. Let me put it that way. Yeah. So, coming back to your question proper, in to, to factor in youth into a strong money economy, we don't need to give the youth the money. Indeed, indeed. We need to give them the opportunity, means opportunity, to create yes. money. If we cannot give them that opportunity to create money themselves, because take, for example, when we are growing up, I have an impression that in the system of Ted by Bata, those people were more intelligent than we were today. Yes. Can we understand better? Than in a money economy. Yes. Because in a money economy, we are tempted to believe that there are money creators and uh, those who, consume, who are there to consume the money. Okay. But in the Bata economy, people knew that if I needed a bucket of beans, it means I must go to the farm to to farm plantain so that the person who needs that plantain and I need the beans must come for the exchange. And you discover that in that economy, people were very active and using their brains. And very buoyant, yeah. Yes. So I think in this money economy, it, with the lifestyle, with the buoyant lifestyle that our youth like today, they want to rule in cars that even presidents have no rule. And which is another problematic. Eh? Yes. They want to live a life that is above their means. And that's why they're engaging into, into uh, crime, uh, cyber I mean, crimes, cyber crimes, and, which is another uh, problem. Obnoxious practices here and there. You see that if you give no them... Youths, of course, want to suffer, yes. to go through that, because life it, it, itself is a challenge. But they're learning equally from our elders. That's why I said a while ago that the kind of leaders we have in Cameroon cannot be taken for a model. Because if an elder knows that in my community there's no portable water and he decides that this money I've been stealing, let me put it into community water. A youth will know that when you have money, you don't go buy, uh, you, you don't fleet your garage with 15, 10 cars. You saw how another uh, state criminal was co condemned the other day who had 53 cars, 32 houses, and how many bank accounts. That's a state uh, official yeah. that some youths are looking up to. So the syndrome of get rich quick has taken over the reasoning of our youth. So b let me come back to the question. You asked yeah, yeah. the money economy versus the youth. Mm -hmm. I think we need to create an academic system where Training centers are more than the grammar schools. You move Moleko Grammar School, GBHS Bamenda, GBH Menda Mkwe, all that. We need to see vocational centers. Which are very practical. Which are very practical. Yeah. Not the ones that they come and tell that GTHS Fundong, GHS Bamenda, there's not even a computer found there. You see somebody doing motor mechanics in a technical school, he becomes a professor of motor mechanics, he cannot start a car. You see those people who are illiterate, who just went to the field, trained themselves in the driving, they are technicians more than somebody who left a school. These are things that we can verify. We know them. And we have been asking questions. How can you go through a school, a training school, then no training passes through you? It, the answer is simple. Those schools are not equipped. Even these our universities littered here and there that are not equipped. We need to fight. And that is why at one point I was telling the youth in a sister media, which is highly watched, that they should start boycotting state universities. If they are not vocational, 
Don't go and waste your time there. You come down and do masters in arts and uh, wah, 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 I'm doing theater art, blah, blah, blah. And it, at the end of the day, you come out, you are priding yourself with a master degree, but you are a beggar at the family level. You have father remains at your beck and call for every need. So we need to change this mentality where we think we must go to grammar school or come back and blow very high grammar, whereas we have little or nothing to offer in the development of our, uh, of our local community. Uh, uh, of course, education to help her uh, to bring to, fo uh, to the fore uh, innate uh, abilities so that uh, we can uh, provide solutions, uh, economic solutions uh, to uh, economic problems faced uh, uh, by our countries and of course the place of the, the young people. And uh, you said something, Mr. Ndiwum, that I want to, to, to you to answer. Uh, Professor Mark Anthony, you talked about youths emulating our, uh, our leaders. But I, I also believe that there is what we call selective perception and selective uh, exposure. So why should we or sh should a young person who has talent, who is uh, endowed, decide to emulate just the negative? If we go that way, how are we going to, to change the narratives? Thank you very much. I'll begin by saying that the reason why an individual will see something wrong and think it is right is because the person who was doing it made him to think it was right. So if we are supposed to copy from our leaders, I want to say this, mm -hmm. the young learn through hypnosis, uh, which means that they watch Absolutely. and yeah. they see what you do, they copy. Okay. So. Do not expect that that child of five years, because children from the age of zero to seven learn through that process. Absolutely, yeah. After that age, you start learning through repetition. And don't forget, a child at zero has a very blank mind. And for his subconscious mind to become effective, don't forget, Everything we do today was actually implanted in us when we were between that age of zero to seven in our subconscious mind. And so most of us, even after the repetition, we change one thing in the disk of our mind. To change the entire disk of your mind we need, you need to, it means you need to do repetition in everything. And so if you have a father who is a thief, and he's showing you that he is a thief. You feel and believe that, let me use the word thiefing. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> so where is the you, place? You th just, just get me. You yes. think that thiefing is but just normal because it is going to be registered in your subconscious that if you have to become like this, you need to steal. Where is the place of critical thinking there? Uh, you are talking about critical thinking. Let me come back to remind you. Yes. Let me, let, I just we, want to, we, we, uh, uh, our focus yes, here is, is the young people and that's what yes. we're trying to change. The I want to show you something. Should we rely on the lapses can you just of, allow our, me to go ahead of and our leaders? Can, can, you, can you just allow me Please, to respond I, to you? Of course. If you look at what I just told you, mm -hmm. a person from the zero age to the age of seven, that is when his future is built. Let me remind you of that. What do I mean by his future is built? Every man, every human being has a conscious and a subconscious mind. Indeed. Your subconscious mind is the aspect of your mind that actually coordinates your life. It is not your conscious mind. Most of the things we learn, we talk of critical thinking, is from the conscious mind. You can be very crit critical in your thinking, but the, the disc... The hard disk of your life, which is a subconscious, is already corrupted. And as long as it's corrupted, irrespective, I want to use this laptop we are using. If this thing is having viruses inside, irrespective of what program you put inside here is going to be corrupted. Am I lying? Any program you put inside here without dealing with the antivirus, without introducing an antivirus that will destroy the corrupt files, and for you to re-establish them, even if you take whatsoever file that is as important without an antivirus, 
it will be corrupted. So what is the antivirus so, that we need to dare to, to bring out those negative attributes? Good. If, if actually you now say you that now, in it, what the is right the person? antivirus? Of good. Course. We come back now. Yes. Schools are the only means to change the Cameroon population. If you want to build for the best, you must place an educational system that targets the transformation of the child. I said there is learning through repetition. Absolutely, yeah. Which implies there are programs that you can set up in schools that transform these young people and make them become productive where they no more depend on what they had learned from the uh, society because their leaders are their society. Indeed. They are all engaging and hoping that these guys will teach them something good. But these guys have taught them the worst aspect of living. But they are the same persons who are talking every day against, uh, we talk about corruption, but they go corrupt. They, every day they come stand, they tell us that we are fighting corruption, but they are they're consciously being corrupted. They tell you, we need you to be get to get involved in agriculture, but they don't do anything. And so you end up realizing that their life is not what they are telling you. So these young people now start questioning. If these guys are telling us these things, but they are not doing, how are they coping? So they want to learn how they are coping. So like I said, we need an educational system, like Njihum uh, uh, actually said also, an educational system that is meant to reformat or re-educate because i will say this to you my beloved sister if you cannot if you actually want to learn you must learn to unlearn everything that you had learned before and so that you can now relearn for the best or for the a better future so the cameroon that we are hoping to have in the youth we are talking to right now can only come if they are formatted that's why somebody said if you actually want to change for example, let's use Cameroon like a case study. He said, if we want the difference, a difference to happen in Cameroon, then we have to kill everybody and allow only children between zero uh, and five. Yes. <laughs> because the person yeah, said not that. Feasible, yes, not visible. But the Anyhow, person was saying right that to, because he opinion, was yes? looking at it like, okay, corruption is in the core of our communities. And so how do we eliminate it? There is just one way, education. Okay. So there is need for an education. Quality now. education. That brings Quality not education. not just coming to learn how to 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 to, to memorize information, but learning how to bring okay. out the best that is in you. Because I will say this: every one of us has potential inside of him to become anything. Indeed. And it is that potential that we are supposed to be tapping. When we talk of education, I want to remind us education actually is not what will give you the best guarantee tomorrow. Education is a means of inspiration for you to become the person you are hoping to become. So when we talk of education, the word even education comes from educos, which actually means to bring out from within. Absolutely. So education was not meant to uh, give you a job was not meant for you to feel information in your head and then you go looking for a job. No, that's not what education was meant for. Education was meant to inspire you to become creative and productive to, in your society. And I'll, to end with this, I will say this. Even if you look at the way the so-called you and measures the wealth of a nation, you end does not measure the wealth of a nation based on the resources that we have under our soil. It does not measure the wealth of a nation based on the money that's in our bank accounts. Mm -hmm. It measures the wealth of a nation with three letters. It measures it with GDP. GDP standing for gross domestic product. product. And the word product can lead you to one thing, productivity. So if you want to talk of gross domestic productivity, implying that every individual is supposed to be productive. And where does productivity come from? Productivity is an output of a right thinking individual. So you can only see a productive individual when we have right thinking persons. So if we do not think well, we will think and sink. 
and of course uh, that's why it is imperative to hold uh, discussions like uh, these to educate the young people to tell them that even though their leaders have failed politics have been taken the wrong way uh, across their countries of course uh, they should not uh, take it uh, 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 the, the the wrong way uh, mr mr Andum, we we continue to talk uh, uh, of the place of the young people and I, uh, it's not as if uh, i am trying to defend what our leaders are doing but then i want us to actually uh, talk in such a way that it will push these young people home according to you their reasoning has been buried with all of the things that are happening across uh, uh, the nation to start up now to stand up and become critical and of course try to to change we know that there's a wind of change that is blowing across africa and we're seeing the positive uh, aspect of it we see africans taking their their independence their sovereignty into their hands and uh, that is not different if young people go about it the uh, the right way to check of course what is theirs peacefully and of course like people uh, that uh, are educated and of course with the goal of proving themselves that we can do it. So uh, we want to have a concluding statement uh, from you well, regarding this um, and the youth of Cameroon. I wouldn't like that our viewers should go away with the impression that maybe I am trying to say that all the youth in Cameroon are wayward or all the Cameroonian youths are looking up to the bad habits put in place by these criminals, these thieves, who call themselves leaders. No. We still have critical youth in Cameroon. Indeed, <laughs> and I yeah. think we are one in this studio. Of, of, of That's course, one of, of the reasons why we are chatting a way forward. If not, I would have happily taken my CPDM badge, be rooming somewhere in Yaoundé, begging food every morning, <laughs> and then thanking the head of state. So I want to tell you that there are still critical youth. The problem is that we are looking at a proportion that could, be, that could create that impact nationally. Not just a few sacrifices, because we are already the few sacrificial lambs who have taken a result not to change our mindset. And we will keep trying to push this impact to others. That's why we came up, we come up with associations almost every day. Okay. When we gather these youth, we try to talk to them. We try to tell them that... Creating awareness. Yes, we try to create yet. awareness to let them know if somebody gives you fish today and fails to teach you how to catch fish, the person did not love you that much. The best way is that we should look at ourselves, us the youth. What is that value that you have in you? If you discover that you were born with an innate ability in the domain of driving, engage in the domain of driving and become an expert in that domain, if you were born as a good farmer, don't look because you have some you have seen the child of a minister and you're only changing cars money after no. Live a life that can create a can, can live a legacy first in your immediate community. Sure. I've always been asking this question to some youth. Come to think of it. Take your behavior in the public. If everybody in your family if everybody in your community, if everybody in your nation was behaving like you or was having your own character, what would your community, like. what would your family, what would your nation look like? Once you start answering these kind of questions as a youth, you will discover that what you can do for your nation is more and far better than what the ministers who never ask these questions can ask. And I think it is still very time enough you are a young journalist that we respect, and this is a push and a platform you are giving to us to educate other youths. Indeed, yeah. Of course, we call on more youths to follow your examples, to follow the examples of others, to, to be critical, to ask such questions that matter. Yeah. Questions that matter to yourself and the nation. If not, we would have spent all our time informing future criminals rather than converting them to be useful to the nation. And to be useful to the nation, the first thing is that we should not always think about the money that is, that is involved. We should think about the impact that we are creating. Indeed. Nelson Mandela had one of the least 
financial account in South Africa, yet his impact is living in the South African right to date. We should not always copy wrong examples. If we have been criticizing the old men that they have mortgaged our future, they have stolen our future, and they have put it in their bank account, then let us also teach these old men by doing what they failed to do right in, when they were in, youth. Indeed, indeed, and indeed. That can only be done if we take our civic responsibilities seriously, courageously, and we start with what is truth. Let a piece of bread and sardine not buy over your future. Because it has already done for many. We are trying to like deliver them from that cord of that piece of bread and sardine that has mortgaged a lot of them. And you'll be surprised that most of them are regretting today in the background. That is already a way forward. It means regretting a wrong decision you took yesterday means you are coming to your senses. And ready to take a better ready step. ready to take a better step. Of course. So that's what I can say for you. Very important. It's a call for young people to be very responsible and, of course, be very uh, conversant conscious. and conscious uh, with uh, the consequences of the actions uh, they take uh, uh, today uh, and not be engulfed or trapped between uh, uh, politicians. Uh, I want to take this opportunity, uh, uh, Mr. Ndiwum, to say thank you to you for honoring this inv uh, invitation and for the greater uh, insight. Uh, I think uh, that just hoping that young people were actually watching this pro program because I'm always like we shouldn't blame let's look into ourselves to see where we can change it because blame let's, game has let's not be helped part of the solution and Let, not part of the problem let's be part of the solution now uh, that is it and thank you you to uh, professor Mark Anthony for giving us your time uh, this day and also for the greater uh, insider uh, uh, acknowledging also uh, the the work of the technical crew in ensuring that uh, that the program was a success. Uh, thank you so much, uh, the viewers, uh, audience of Afric Media. Thank you for always trusting the Pan African television. And of course, I'll be with you again on Saturday as we continue to talk about issues uh, that. Uh, have uh, uh, we go a long way to change our nations to change our continent and of course uh, thank you and do have a lovely moment in the company of our transmissions. Bye. Thank you.